The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do, not, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that I love about our faith is that no matter how long or how hard you study theology, our Lord is always eager to share with us even deeper mysteries to help us understand, to synthesize and make connections, make connections between the Old Testament, the New Testament, sacred tradition, the teachings of the church, he helps us to dispel misconceptions, to bring us closer to the truth. When we have those eureka, those aha moments, those, those light bulb moments when they go off, it's not like just learning some random fact, like peanuts are not actually nuts, or the town of Manawi, Nebraska has just one resident. These are moments when we apprehend at a deeper level the divine self-revelation of the Word of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity. I had one of those aha moments when I was preparing this homily today. I read, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these. Now I've preached before that if we believe our Lord will work miracles through us, from Mark's Gospel, by using my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. In this, I understand and I believe, even though I'm still working on getting my own faith to be that size of a mustard seed. But Jesus said that we will do even greater works. How is it that we can do greater things than he who created the heavens and the earth? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas has something to say about this. He wrote in the Summa that if we are simply looking at the mode of action, the mode of action, well then, the creation of something from nothing when God created the universe from nothing, it wasn't just good, it was great. But he says that a second way 
that work can be called great is if we look at the what that is made. And here's his proposition that the conversion of a single sinner, that moment when the what is made is a, a just man who shares in the life of the Trinity, well, he says, for a just man to be made from a sinner is greater than to create heaven and earth. For heaven and earth shall pass away, but the justification of the ungodly shall endure. God and only God could create the universe. But repentance, that's our work and God's work. It's God's mercy and it's our free will being exercised for that repentance. When we are not in a state of grace but are sorry for our sins on account of God's goodness and his love for us, when we go to confession and when we hear those words of absolution, this is a greater thing than when God said, let there be light on the first day of creation. This isn't just something we do for ourselves. Today we celebrate the apostles and martyrs, St. James and St. Philip, just like Jesus did on the cross, just like St. Stephen did as he was being stoned to death when St. James was thrown off the temple and lay half dead on the ground, his legs broken, he didn't wish ill upon his murderers. He didn't pray for their retribution. He prayed for their salvation. Lord, Forgive me, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When he prayed for the conversion of sinners, when he helped by his love for them, when he helped them to move their hearts to repentance, when we do the same, we participate with Jesus in something great. As Aquinas argued, the good of the universe is greater than the particular good of one if we consider both in the same genus. But the good of grace in one is greater than the good of nature in the whole universe. St. James and St. Philip pray for us.